Welcome. Today is a very special day. Not just because this technique I'm going to show you is going to blow your mind, especially if you don't know about it. And I would venture to guess that probably the majority of people who use Ableton, whether they've used it for a year or two years, I would say probably 90% of those people probably don't know this trick. Um, so not only will that be really cool, but we've got a pop filter. So hopefully my audio is better and we don't have a lot of those pops, which are called plosives. Also, it was a multicolor pack, so I can switch up the colors. Anyways, we got to get into this video. So we're going to be using follow actions choose what gets played. So what that effectively is called is generative music. Um, so we really got to dive into this because this is incredible and uh, it, it's so musical, so unpredictable. And like all things I really like, it just um, in, in music production, uh, it plays forever. So let's get started here. So I'm going to right click and insert a MIDI track. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to record an armit and I'm going to drop a wavetable. So right now, all I have is uh, some notes and this is the wavetable we're in and it's just putting a sine wave. So if we dropped, and it really doesn't matter what synthesizer you use for this. I mean, right now we're just going to start with a sine wave. So whether we dropped an operator or an analog, its default would be just a sine wave as well. What I got inspired to do this is because I, I played this little uh, little melody. Excuse me, where is it? I don't know, it kind of sounds like an old video game or something like that I heard, maybe in a Mario game. I don't know. It's, so I was like, oh, I kind of like that. I want to see if I can use this technique with those notes. So basically, that's playing a C my, uh, major scale. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to double click, and the first note I'm going to add is going to be a C3. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to click Legato, and I'm going to rename this and call it C. Then I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to name it D, and I'm going to go into here, and uh, let's see. I'm going to zoom in so I can get these notes real big, just so I make sure I don't goof anything up. Okay, I want this to be D. I'm just doing the C major scale, but I'm going to uh, skip out a note just because. All right, so I'm going to push Command D to duplicate this, and um, the next note is going to be E, so I'm going to move this to E, I'm going to duplicate it, and instead of going to, um, whoops, make sure we're right here, it's going to be G. Um, yeah, so the next note in the scale would be F, um, which is the perfect fourth, but yeah, that's right, we can get into music theory here. Um, I want it to be G, and then I'm going to duplicate it again. This one, I'm going to make it A. So, A, then I'm going to duplicate it again, and we're going to do B, which is the seventh of the scale. Oh, whoops. Make sure I'm clicking on the note. And then I'm going to duplicate again. We're going to go back to C, the octave above. Okay, duplicate it one more time. Don't worry, we're almost done here. That's going to be D above. So I'll call it D2. This is C2 because it's like the octave above. But make sure we're in D. So if we click through, we should have D, C, B, A, G, E, D, C. Now, if you want to add F, you can. Um, to be honest, I just figured why not. So here's what we want to do we want to do follow action. So if I click play on this C, We're just going to get C, looping over a bar. We click A, launch A's clip. So I'm going to click on C, and I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm just going to click all the way down so everything's highlighted. And then we're going to come over here, and we're going to hit this little triangle, and we're going to click Follow Action. So right now, it is actually um, it's applying this to all the clips. And what we're going to do is right now it says 100% of the time play the next clip, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click other, which means each time we play a clip, at the end of it playing, it'll play a clip other than the one it was playing. Now, I'm going to 
click out of this and just click to D, you'll see they all have the same settings. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play this C. Now watch what happens. So now it's saying after this bar, it's going to play D. And after it plays D for a bar, it's going to randomly play another one. Now you're going to say, this isn't so musical, is it? Well, what if instead of playing, I'm going to stop this here. What if instead of playing these, just one bar, then another note for a bar, what if we made them play really quickly? Um, and so here's a little trick. And um, what we could do is if you see over here, it says linked and it says 1x. What that means is when it's unlinked, it's going to play for the entire length you have set, which we have a bar. Each one's a bar. So it says we're going to play the entire, um, we're going to play the entire looped region. And after we play it once, then we're going to do what the follow action is. So if we put it up to 2x or 4x, that would mean play it four times and go to the next one. But we're going to leave it on 1x. But this really cool trick is we're going to click and we're going to go to unlinked. Now, we want to make sure we select all of our tracks again. We're going to go to unlinked. Now, this says... Um, irregardless of how long our loop is, which all of our loops are set to one bar, which you can see right here, this means one bar. It's um, bars, beats, and uh, this one I believe is sixteenths. So we're actually going to uh, make it just be one sixteenth note. And what's really cool is if uh, is that we can adjust it while we play. So now take a look at this. Before with linked, we had this, just playing a bar, a bar of D, a bar of A a bar of D an octave above. That actually sounded nice. Bar of E, okay. Uh, let's stop this. So now what we're gonna do, make sure we have all of them selected so it applies it to everything, is we're gonna go to unlinked. And we've got out on a quarter note. And watch what happens now, guys. Okay, now shift tab to go to the um, instrument tab. Now here's where it gets fun. Let's come over here. So right now we're staying on sine wave, okay? Because I want to start small and build up. Right now we want to be in the amplifier envelope, okay? If I give, get rid of the attack, it's very, uh, you hear that ch -ch -ch. I'm gonna give it a little bit of attack till that kind of goes away, just one second. Now, look what happens when I lower the decay, or excuse me, when I lower the sustain, okay? Now, I'm going to bring in the decay. So right now, it's going from a max volume down to 30, it's only playing 35 milliseconds. So when I, when I push it out, but I want it to play full volume. In fact, I'm going to lower this master volume a little bit. It's a little bit too loud. Now, here's where it gets interesting. And you know I love release. Let's give it more release. I'm going to lower it because it's getting loud. I'm going to push stop. So what are some things we can do? So we're obviously playing in C. And right now, it's just indiscriminatorily just playing a clip and then playing any clip other than the clip. And so what I'm going to do is because we're in C, why don't we make it where it, 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 will, it will go to, to another note from C, but it might stay on C again, you know, because we want to enforce the root um, of our scale. So let's go into C and let's double click. Now, look at this. See how we have other? So it's saying 100% of the time play other, but we have this other action here. Now, we're going to go to play again. Now, right now, nothing will change until we move this slider. So let's do 50-50. Actually, no, let's do 60. Let's leave it right here, 63%. So what this says is when I play this clip, 33, after it plays, there's a 37% chance that it'll play another clip, any of these other ones, or there's a 63% chance, I'll make it 60 actually, 60% um, chance it plays it again. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this other C up an octave. So I'm gonna move it over here and put it to play again. So that means if we play a C in one of these C notes, which is you know the anchor of our scale right now, we're in a C major scale, um, 
what's unique in uh by the way if you're like dude i hate c major everyone's doing c major i don't like it man okay we'll push shift tab to get back into here here's a bonus tip go into midi effects or excuse me go into uh yeah midi effects and drop a pitch and if you just click it down one, now it's in B. So now all these are transport. Now we're in B, so we'll get a different flavor. So now we're in B major. I always got sick in music theory tutorials when everyone is always doing C major. I'm like, I hate the major scale, and I don't like C. Then you might be thinking, well, why did you do C on this one? Well, because I just it, it just happened to be in C major when I played that thing. Anyways, so um, let's click play, and now you'll see it'll hang on C a little bit more. See? That's too much. I'm gonna go back and see here, and I'm gonna do a 50-50 split. That sounds beautiful. Now, check this out. What's really great about Wavetable is now watch what happens when we click sub. Like, it's just adding another octave, so now it's playing two notes. So if we lower the gain, so you can dial it into taste. Now look at tone. Tone will add a little bit of like distortion to this sub. So we got this playing and it's very nice. We're in B major now because we don't do C major. We do B major because we don't follow the herd. <laughs> so, and we got our nice little sub. Now you might be saying, hey man, like, that's cool, but now we need some wavetable sound design. So let's play this uh, filter, or let's play this wavetable, because we can scan through the, the, the wavetable. So we've got a saw wave, and then we've got a mix between a saw wave and a sine wave right here, and then we've got a square wave up here, and this is sort of like the mix between the square and the saw. So let's click play again. Give it some LFO one. Let's lower the frequency. Let's go into the matrix and add some. Too fast, right? Like, I don't like that. Who likes that? Lower the rate of LFO one. That's nice, huh? Let's add some filter drive. Let's add some resonance too. Whoops. Let's add some audio effects. Let's add a chorus, because chorus honestly sounds good with these synthesizers. I'm going to lower the amount. There's too much of LFO1 going on. We're going to add a chorus on here. So come over here into Audio Effects, and it's under Modulators, excuse me, Pitch and Modulation, Chorus. Told you it would sound good. Most of the time, you just want to dial in the rate. I like s slower rates, like under a hurt. And then let's get some reverb. I'm gonna turn it off dark hall, put it on shimmer. Wow, I did not think it was gonna do that. I normally just leave it on the default dark hall, which doesn't sound bad, but you got quartz, shimmer. Dude, shimmer, I think it's because it pitch shifts it up 12 semitones. Yeah, that's great. What else can we do? Um. I'm gonna do some basic EQing. Let's let's uh, beef it up with some compression. So here's a here's a, an extra trick. Um, let's uh, push Command T for an audio track. Let's get our panel open over here in the input output, and I want to record the uh, 
audio from this wavetable. Record enable. Now check this out. We're, we're recording the output right now. See that? So cool. And we can do stuff with this as well. You can actually also record the MIDI as well. I'm gonna let this play for a little bit and I'm actually going to uh, open up a MIDI track and I'm going to click wavetable, um, pre-effects, I don't think it matters, monitor in, and I'm gonna record enable and I think this should record the actual MIDI notes. Not that it matters, cause it's just random, but I think it does that while we're waiting. Yeah, look, see, check that out. If you didn't, and I, I bet you a lot of people don't know this, that you can do this as well. Like if we just really liked this section, we could do that. I'm gonna click stop here. And we could have another instrument play that, which is so cool. So in any event, we have this. So we're gonna click stop and we're gonna just stop everything. And I'm gonna push command option I, that's the, to close that down. So right now we've got this. So let's push, push play and We've got that audio, and we can do so much with that. You guys might be thinking, especially if you watched my one video that said this is my like favorite Ableton sound design technique. Um, this is like my favorite technique here. So check this out. So if I play this, I'm going to use the warp engine to time stretch it and listen to how different it sounds now. Check this out. Ready? Times it by two. Oh. <laughs> And then under this MIDI channel, this is just MIDI notes, right? So I can just go into wavetable and roll like a wavetable on here. Um, oh, we got to come back in and uh, all ends and monitor. Well, they're not playing the same notes. <laughs> So that's why it just sounds like madness. But like, ready, you come in here, we can stretch it even more. Um, I'm gonna turn off warp, and then turn warp back on. Like, look at, look at this, like, what is this sound? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is why I made that video. This is my favorite Ableton Live sound design technique. Like, I wasn't even trying to be clickbaity. I was like, this is great. I don't know what else. To, if I was like, repitch warp mode, secret. You know, like, people would be like, what? But like, listen to this. What is this? Like, Phantom of the Opera? I don't even know what the... Anyways, guys, if you found this useful, you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I started using Ableton exactly nine years ago. In fact, I bought it March of 2013. And I was about to say, I don't know why it, didn't st why it stopped because we didn't have loop on. So yeah, um, like, comment, and subscribe. I've got so many other stuff. In fact, if you liked this technique to make generative music, we have another interesting technique that doesn't use follow actions, which actually relies on um, MIDI effects to do the same thing, but it's just different. Dude, I love this. This is, it's just great. And oh my God, you can, anyways, I hope you had fun. This was fun and have a great night.